What is up guys, it is RSC6414 here, back with another video. This time I'm reviewing TNA, Impact Wrestling, and overall I gotta say, the show was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't anything great, it wasn't terrible, but it was it was, it was was decently enjoyable to watch. Um, yeah, there was not as many promos as usual, there was about two segments, generally it seems like there's more segments and then matches. Here it was kind of even, I think. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get to the review. The first thing that we had here was you had, uh, Impact open up with Eric Young, the new TNA World Heavyweight Champ. He, uh, talked about how he started from the bottom, basically, worked his way all the way up to the top, and now he's champion, basically. And, um, everybody started the You Deserve It chants. He said he was the champ for the fans, and then here he said the era of paper champion is over. Here comes Dixie Carter. She interrupts. She says that um, it's all because of her that he's gotten this far. It's because of her for his beard and why he's so famous. She basically takes credit for all his success and uh, fame. She says that uh, basically he'll be the face, but she he's basically she basically says he'll be the face of TNA if she if he. Uh, listen to what she has to say and uh, does like a remodel of him or basically like remake of him and then he uh, basically the segment was just kind of random and then Bully Ray comes out he says uh, he basically comments EY says congratulations on winning the title yada 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 and uh, basically tells Dixie Carter that he took his took her money and basically shove it up your ass it's basically what he said Bully Ray and uh yeah so we go on to the first match of the night we had velvet sky versus madison rain in a knockout street fight the title was not on the line here it was back and forth match nothing really special here madison rain hit a spear on velvet sky for the one two three and madison rain would defeat velvet sky here uh maybe there was like a kendo stick or two used but uh nothing special here then the next thing we had was um, MVP in the ring. He talks about how Eric, how, uh, Eric Young, how he congratulated him, basically, and then uh, says that he deserved it. Then he mentions Samoa Joe. He says that um, Samoa Joe said he wouldn't be available to uh, participate in TNA anymore. And uh, he said that Samoa Joe hadn't returned any of his calls. And MVP said, rumor has it, Samoa Joe's disgruntled, so I want to talk to Samoa Joe face to face. He calls Samoa Joe out. Samoa Joe doesn't come out. Austin Aries comes out instead. He says he's the disgruntled one. MVP's been ignoring everything Austin Aries has done. Then MVP says, uh, well, I gave you the opportunity to participate, but you turned on me and went to Team Dixie for the, lo the uh, Lethal Lockdown match. And uh, we really haven't seen Aries since lockdown, so this was good seeing him again on TV. I'm a big fan of Austin Aries in, in ring, and uh, his mic works pretty good. So basically he says, uh, Austin Aries is talking trash to MVP. They exchange words. They say, uh, let's have a match right now. Austin MVP challenges Aries. Aries says, let's wait till next week because I'm not that stupid. He rolls out of the ring, calls MVP a former convict, and... Uh, Heads on his way to the backstage. The next match we had, I thought the segment was pretty good, but uh, MVP versus Austin Aries next week on Impact. Should be a good match. I'm looking forward to it. Next match we have the Wolves versus the Bromans for the TNA Tag Team Championships. The Bromans being the Tag Team Champs. Uh, Robbie E. and Jesse Goddard were competing in this match versus Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards of the Wolves. This match was whatever. Nothing really good here, to be honest. It was a couple cool spots by the Wolves, as always. Uh, basically, what happened is the Wolves hit the alarm clock on Jesse. Then they hit mushroom stomps on Robbie E. They were pinning him for the one, two, and then DJ Zima comes in and hits the Wolves with the computer <laughs> that he uses for his DJing and uh, breaks up the pinfall. The ref rings the bell. And the uh, Wolves win the match, but the Bromans retain the Tag Team Championships. Like I said on my review last week, I think uh, the Wolves will win the titles here at a uh, Sacrifice Pay-Per-View. I expect to see the match probably made there. 
And uh, then I think the Wolves will end up winning the tag titles at the Sacrifice pay-per-view, which will be cool because I like the Wolves. I'd like to see them uh, win the titles since I've followed them on the Indies and stuff. The next thing we had was EC3 and Rockstar Spud, Ethan Carter III and Rockstar Spud versus Willow in a handicap match. This match was back and forth. Basically, Willow kicked uh, EC3 out of the ring, and Willow hits the twist of fate on Rockstar Spud, Jeff Hardy. One, two, three, and Willow defeats Rockstar Spud and EC3. No surprise really here. After the match, EC3 and, and uh, Rockstar Spud were beating Willow down in the middle of the ring, and all of a sudden, Kurt Angle returns. We haven't seen him since a couple weeks before lockdown when EC3 took him out of in-ring action. Kurt Angle comes out. He hits the uh, Angle German suplex on EC3, and EC3 and Rockstar Spud retreat up the entrance ramp. It was good to see Kurt Angle back. I'm glad he's back. He basically says... He said EC3 looked like he saw a ghost. He says he's back, and uh, he does, if any if EC3 thinks one little injury can end his career, then he's definitely wrong about him. Uh, Angle says I'm not gonna I'm gonna fight against you EC3 till I put you out of action and those and not just carry you out of the ring, but I'm gonna put you in a body bag. That was pretty badass, I thought. And uh, good promo overall by Angle. So it looks like EC3 and Kurt Angle will continue to feud. The next match we had, we had a uh, Sonata versus the X Division Champion versus Ult uh, Tigre Uno. This match was the uh, second match of a three-part series and uh, Sonata won the first match. If he wins this match then he retains the title. I thought this was original. I liked how TNA did this and uh, basically what happens Tigre Uno hits the Sabretooth Splash, a.k.a. the 450 Splash. He pins Sonata for the 1, 2, 3, and Tigre Uno defeats Sonata. So we will have one last match in the Best of 3 series, and the winner will either take the title for the X Division or will retain. So we'll see. And uh, I'd like to see Tigre Uno, but Sonata won uh, at the Wrestle 1 event overseas a couple months ago, so I wouldn't be surprised if he retained and won the last match of the Best of 3 series. It was an okay match for us, it was short, but uh, yeah, so nothing too too special, but not too bad. The next thing we had was a tables match, an open challenge by uh, Bobby Roode. He uh, challenged, uh, the challenge was accepted by Gunner, Gunner versus Bobby Roode in a tables match. The reason it's a tables match is because Bobby Roode versus Bully Ray at a tables match at the Sacrifice pay-per-view. This match was back and forth. Uh, James Storm came down in the ring when it looked like Gunner was he was on the top rope. looked like he was about to put Bobby Roode away. Gunner gets pushed off the top rope by James Storm, who was on the ring apron. Gunner nails the table but doesn't go through the table. Bobby Roode gets up. Picks Gunner up, and he hits the Rude Bomb on Gunner, putting him right through the table, and Bobby Rude defeats Gunner. It was a pretty good match. I would think it should have gotten a little more time, but uh, it helped build the feud between Storm and Gunner. After the match, James Storm and uh, Bobby Rude are beating down Gunner, and then Bully Ray comes to the aid right before James Storm is about to hit the last call super kick on Gunner. Gunner and, uh, B yeah, Bully Ray comes to the aid of Gunner, Rude, and, um, James Storm retreat up the ramp. Later on, we find out Bully Ray versus, Bully Ray and Gunner versus James Storm and Bobby Rude in a tag team match next week on Impact, so that match is set, so that should be an entertaining tag match as well. And then we had the, our main event, Eric Young, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion versus Abyss. He defends the title in a Monsters Ball match, Abyss's kind of match. Eric Young wanted this match, basically, we find out earlier on the night. Eric Young wanted this Monsters Ball match to defend against Abyss to show he can do it. This match was pretty good. Various weapons were used, trash can lids, thumbtacks. Abyss at one point chokeslammed Eric Young on the bed of thumbtacks for the one, two, and Eric Young kicks out. Then you have... 
uh, a little barbed wire board set up in the ring. Eric Young drop kicks Abyss, who falls on the barbed wire board. Eric Young hits a elbow drop off the top rope on Abyss on the barbed wire board. Eric Young pins Abyss to the one, two, three, and Eric Young defeats Abyss and retains the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Overall, I gotta say, good match for what it was worth. Eric Young retains as expected, and I'm sure this is not the end of Eric Young feuding with Magnus and Abyss. So that basically ended the show. Overall grade, I'd give this week's show 5 out of 10. Thought it was mediocre. Not too bad, but not the best. So overall grade, 5 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos and subscribe. Thanks, guys.